Would you like to 10X your productivity and stop feeling so overworked and overwhelmed? Welcome to the Extreme Productivity Podcast with New York Times bestselling author and Inc. 500 entrepreneur, Kevin Cruz. 1440, that is the number that can change your life. Once you realize that there are 1,440 minutes in every day and that once you use them, you will never get them back again. Time is more valuable than money or anything else because without time, nothing else matters. So Kevin Cruz here helping you to get the most out of your 1440. Last week, we talked about how to manage distractions while you're working from home. And this week, we're going to talk about how you can make your entire team, if you're managing a team of people, how you can make sure your entire team is productive. But first, I want to remind you to check out my new book, 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management on Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever you like to buy your books. Uh, I have no ads or sponsors on this podcast, so it would mean the world to me if you check out that book. So I got an email, the latest email from someone who said, hey, my, pro- my productivity is pretty good, but I manage a team of creatives how can I make my entire team productive? As creatives, they're not so focused on their own productivity. So here's the thing. (laughs) It starts when you're trying to um, instill something in your entire team or your entire company. If you're the entrepreneur, you're the owner of the company. Whether it's something like productivity, or I used to complain because I didn't think my team uh, was innovative enough. I was trying to drive innovation. I just wasn't seeing it. A lot of these things are traits, almost personality attributes. So it starts actually with the hiring process. If your team is not productive or innovative or whatever thing is you want to fill in the blank, it's largely because you weren't screening for it. You weren't looking for it in the interview process. You know, there are pre-employment personality assessments that you can use to kind of get a a better feel of what kind of person someone is personality wise. Um, I think the uh, many, many, many of these personality assessments, they'll call it an achievement orientation. You know, no matter what else is going on, that person, and I'm one of them, (laughs) isn't going to feel good unless he or she has achieved something that day. I think in the Gallup Strengths Finder, they call it activator. You know, an activator wants to start new things, wants to get going. I mean, has this kind of hustle mindset, activator. So there's ways either through a psychological assessment, personality assessment, or just even the interview process where you can start to find people, including creatives, that have this productivity trait you're looking for. It reminds me, you know, this topic of hiring the right people. Uh, I was in Rome for a conference and the CEO of a fitness company, uh, I didn't know him before Before then. He told a story about how uh, he gave kind of a funny, uh, funny analogy. He said, it's like, you know, we all want animals to climb up the tree. So we get a bunch of dogs and spend all this time trying to train them or pay them to climb up the tree. So there's a better way is to just bring in a bunch of squirrels. <laughs> and clearly squirrels, you do nothing and they will climb that tree. So you got to hire for it. That's how it starts. But the second thing is you've got to make sure you're also rewarding for it. Uh, if you want to make your team more productive, you know, is productivity part of their performance review? Is it part of their annual goals? Uh, are you bonusing to it or giving some kind of incentive pay for it? How do you define it? Do they know how you're defining it? Step three would be to train it. So even if they've got a natural inclination to be uh, achievement oriented and it's part of their performance review, you need to make sure that they've got the knowledge and skills necessary to be productive. Do they know how to manage the, the flood of emails they're getting? Do they know how to run a meeting efficiently? Do they know how to schedule their day and plan their tasks in a way that's going to get the most important things done first? Fourth and finally, you can create, rather than thinking about the individuals of your team, you can try to create a culture 
of productivity or systems that promote productivity. For example, a lot of companies, we know that meetings are one of the most complained about time wasters. So many companies pick one day a week where they just ban meetings. Now, maybe you can't do it for your whole company, but you could certainly set the precedent for your team, for the people that report to you and say, hey guys, you know, let's not schedule meetings on Wednesdays if at all possible, because those will be our maker days. You know, we're just going to make stuff. Meetings can be the other days, but we're just going to put our head down and be productive on Wednesdays. Um, One of my favorite things is to just sort of set a cultural norm that meetings get scheduled in the afternoons, not the mornings. I like to create in the mornings when our brains are most energized and fresh. I like to collaborate in the afternoons when um, it's a little bit of a better time to have phone calls or conversations or meetings. You can set a precedent when it comes to meetings. You could call people in for, and instead of everything being a 30 or 60 minute meeting, make your meetings 15 minute stand up meetings. Take the chairs out of your conference room. When they see you doing something crazy like that, they'll know they can do it. Bring a, uh, a countdown clock, like the time timer. Just go onto Amazon and, and uh, search for time timer, and you'll see the, the clock I'm talking about. I call it the Google clock. Bring in one of these uh, countdown clocks and say, hey, we're going to meet for 30 minutes. Set the t- countdown clock and have it tick away. And you better end that meeting when that clock dings and says time is up. That's going to give them permission and encourage them to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to run my meetings sharp and on time and bring in this crazy clock too. So that's it. Um, You know, with making an existing team productive that isn't, it can be tough because again, you might have hired the wrong people. But if you're not able to replace them or don't want to replace them, make sure you are rewarding them for productivity, that you're training them for productivity, and you're creating team-wide systems and a culture of productivity. That is it. I hope you will leave an honest review on iTunes. Let me know what you think about this podcast, and then iTunes will know to share this podcast with others. That would mean the world to me. And until next week, remember, master your minutes to master your life.